dealing stealth tech. My spies actually have begun to do some really useful stuff. Actually, they're, they're, they're having a little bit of a, having a little bit of a renaissance at the moment. I, I think I'm gonna go for polygraph, yeah, for now. That will translate better to defensive strength later on. And I'm just beginning to resurrect all of my trade routes with Marley. Now this unfortunately does throw resources at Marley, but I am honestly willing to take that because I'm pumping that city full of food, production, they're putting all the districts in it. When I do take it over, because don't forget, uh, England owned a lot of Africa. That's still very much in our sights. We're going to have to betray them in order to get that to work. Um, yeah, I, I need that city to be as big as possible because once I take that 34 population city, the loyalty pressure it'll put on everything else will be amazing for me. I'm also quickly going to take advantage of Ingarzagamu in order to buy myself some artillery core. Now, those are only a thousand each for a core. I can do that and I can buy myself an observation balloon for pretty cheap. I've got some oil to use, not a huge amount, but some. But between that and my bombers, it means that I've got a little bit more of a strike force than I had before, which is pretty cool. And a free settler. I believe Bermuda is probably a good one. I think this is probably a little bit high for Bermuda, isn't it? But it's still a really good city, so well, <laughs> we're going to go settle there. This Albankin is a fantastic card for me, but colonial taxes, well, we are the English Empire now. So 25% extra gold and 10% production on cities not on my original continent. That is stacking nicely now. Republican Legacy is doing a lot of good for us. I think Natural Philosophy is also doing quite a lot of good for us as well, but this Albankin is probably better better for now. I'll take a little bit of a science hit but I'm up still on 561 and tech wise we are beginning to catch up. I'm now in fourth. Only Mali, Rome and Indonesia are ahead of me for now and Indonesia doesn't seem to be too keen on going to space. Mali still hasn't got nanotech. Rome does which is more worrying but they haven't finished their moon landing and I'm not entirely sure why they haven't done that yet. They seem to just sort of be waiting on it really odd. They've started the project and they haven't done anything else. So, I mean, yeah, sure. Combined arms. I'm hoping we have at least some uranium, but we will see. I want to make sure that my alliances are still very much up and running. Can you make a deal to go to World Montezuma for me? Do you want to do this? No, they really don't. So that kind of decides that for me. Economic Alliance for you. Who well, asked? Brazil. Do you want to go to war with Montezuma? You might do. No, no one does. Hmm. All right, we just might need to wait on that one. Who's allied to Montezuma? Congo and Tamiris. Oh, so Congo is probably the most problem for me. They have a lot of African cities. I mean, that's not necessarily a bad person to go to war with in the longer run, but you know, it's probably not perfect right now. Mali will go to war with me. We're against Montezuma, so I'm going to do it. We're going to basically trigger World War I. This is going to start a colossal battle of which the world has yet to see so far. No wonder the game is having a think about it. So we are now at war with uh, Tamaris' 4,000 strength army, uh, Congo's 3,000, the Aztecs have almost 4,000 as well. That's no fun. And honestly, I need basically you to get involved against as many people as possible. Now, my allies, unfortunately, are probably all going to be mostly scared of what's happening right now. Yeah, nobody really wants to get involved at all. I'm not surprised. Being honest, I'm not surprised. Oh no, Japan will go in against Congo. That's uh, very briefly kind of the best result that I managed to find there. Cosmetics and chocolate. Nice. Actually, there's a couple of cities that are now happy, but we have a small air force and we have a larger navy. We are ready to rock. I caught the Aztecs still with a huge army just sort of stationed off the side of my empire. There is a, there's a couple of things like battleships here which are a little bit trickier. I need to take those out first because those battleships provide air support. Once the air support disappears, however, we can do things like starting to sink these embarked units. Let's just quickly get all of these done as soon as we can. There's a lot of era score to be won here. My navy is basically going to focus fire against the Aztec embarked army. That for me is the easier target. It softens them up and it stops them from landing that army somewhere and using it against me. I also have my sea dogs. Now the sea dogs are weaker, but they can pillage, which is useful. I have a couple of red coats. That's uh, against a four. Oh, the Aztecs have modern armor armies. Oh boy, that is slightly tougher than I wanted it to be. Yeah, these bombers do barely anything against them. That's a little bit problematic. Well, we'll just have to deal with that as it comes up, I guess. I have all my artillery. I can start peppering the walls. This is the one city that I need to destroy quickly. 
because it unlocks one more aluminium for us. Once we've got that, we'll be in a little bit of a better position. But yeah, anti-tank. Anti-tank is going to be needed against this modern armor. Most importantly, uranium. How are we doing? Oh, there is uranium in that piece of Brussels that we just stole. Oh yes, look at that. Bam. That's actually really helpful. So we have some uranium. Not a lot of uranium, but some. Six results on the entire map. Congo has built a wonder on some. Brazil has some. Indonesia has some. I have some. There's a second and a third piece. Oh, hello. Okay, right. Well, there we go. What we're going to do is we're going to quickly do that. Oh, I'm at war with that Congo Ranger. That's not very handy. So I need that uranium. I'm going to have to buy another builder because I'm just about to lose the first one. Oh. Yeah, this war's going to get messy quickly. I think missile cruisers might be my best shot at keeping a really strong navy. Battleships have 70 strength. Missile cruisers have 90. If I head down that direction, I'll unlock nukes and I'll unlock... Yeah, no, that. I, the more I think about it, that's a, that's a good option for me. Let's see so what sort of retribution the Aztecs dish out to me. Now, I might have a couple of traders taken from me here because they're all going to Mali and I think the Congo have probably got a navy. Oh, one, two. Sea Dog destroyed. Artillery destroyed by modern armor. Red coat was bombarded a little bit. Modern anti tank. Red coat was destroyed by modern armor. Line inventory was bombarded. Oh my goodness. Okay, yeah, the Aztecs have a lot of strong units, a huge amount of strong units, and wow, the modern armor just rolled over my artillery. That's not fun. They have a lot of it. They have a lot of it. We have got to get some tank busters in quickly. Focus fire, I think, to begin with on a couple of those modern armors. I'm going to retreat my army to C, I believe. So I'll keep this encampment going. They may slam some units into that encampment. That would not be a bad result for me. It's getting a little bit more backup. Uh, Johannesburg, that's another suzerain. I'm taking that one back. And then Vatican City up to the north. It gives me a little bit more points, a little bit more visibility. Just helps me to think about bringing in a couple more troops. Vatican's up here. Okay, the troops are really rubbish. But Johannesburg's a little bit better. How much strength do the modern armors have? 112 base strength. If I were to produce right now some anti-tank... Um, no, that would be 85 for an anti-tank core. It would be 90. They'd still be run over by those tanks. Tanks are far too strong. Might have to go anti-tank, modern anti-tank. That would still be 95, 100 strength. Oh, still much weaker than modern armor. I need some fighters. I think we're going to need fighters to get rid of these. Although we can actually wage war using our borders for a little bit. Let's get the bombers to do a couple of surgical, uh, surgical strikes against the modern armors. This red coat is undoubtedly going to die. There's no way I'm going to get it out of there. So I might as well just pillage, get some extra uh, science that's fine, I'll retreat all of my troops to the uh, coast. I'm much safer in the sea. I have basically three rain here. Now, sea dogs are invisible as long as there's nothing around them. So I can do that. I can do that. Go back to this point of the sea. Nothing should be able to see that. The sea dogs are going to make them worth uh, their, their weight in gold just by pillaging and doing lots of fun things there. Let's settle this city of Hull. Oh no, not Hull. Anywhere but Hull. With 14 aluminium, I think it's worth just getting the... Oh, I'm just trying to think. Do I just get the bomber in, get the fighter in, and then just sort of attack? 100 range strength. If I get strafe on that fighter really quickly, that would be an amazing pickup for me. I think that's going to be the thing to do. But... We need aircraft carriers to get the fighters across because I believe their movement, they're not going to be able to get across. Oh no, I can use Braga to island hop. I can do that. Let's get one fighter in. Let's do that. That's that's uh, that's not bad. I'm just going to make a tank core briefly because it'll just up all of my city strength. That's the strongest thing I can build. 110 makes my encampments much tougher. If they do run modern armors into my encampments, which I hope they do because it'll actually reduce their strength quite considerably. I want myself to be as strong as possible. I don't want them doing any uh, less damage to themselves than I can force them to. One thing I haven't seen just yet is a strong Aztec air force. That's the only advantage I have at the moment over the Aztecs. Yeah, goodbye Redcoats. Goodbye. You did well. Oh, that is a lot of tank armies. Oh boy. As things promote as well, they're going to get harder and harder to hit. Yeah, I need to basically, it, it's no point hitting the modern armors thinking about it unless I can get all of my attacks in on one in order to break it that turn. That I think would be a cool thing to do. Right, 
Let's uh, give a discount on coal power plants because I'm still building those quite a lot. I'm going to vote up on incense because I can probably buy quite a few of those from Mali. Last time Japan was voted A on the up so I'm going to do that again because you know sod it and then world's fair. I think that's the thing I'm saving my diplomatic favour though I just have the feeling that the world is going to throw an emergency my way at some point. Banning coal power. Okay, no more coal power. No more tea. Oh dear. And Montezuma has got the um, world voting power, so that's no fun. No more tea. What is this world? Why? Why would it do that? Might as well then just strike at the city. We'll bypass the Aztec army. I mean, feels like a bit of a rubbish move, but... If they are going to be difficult to fight in the field, we might as well just, yeah, bypass them entirely. In theory, I can attack this Aztec city with all my battleships, so because there's nothing else embarked in the area, I'm going to do that. But yeah, I'm keeping an eye out for other things that I can shoot, like artillery armies is always a good thing. There's uh, more regular tanks here that I can shoot as well. We have total naval supremacy, so... We've kettled the Aztecs in. Now, they are unfortunately a very angry fish of kettling. <laughs> That's, it's not a good thing in the long run for us, but it's nice, though. But let's find out. Does this route use the sea? Yes, it does. I was going to say, I don't want it going anywhere other than the sea because we will get killed. I've got Hercules back as well. Hercules is 102 strength, so he will still be destroyed by tanks really quickly. But it means I've got space now to put another few districts down. Maybe I can make Preston into something really badass. Hmm. Okay, they're moving all my units around. Oh, they're going to attack Plymouth navally with the tanks. Okay. Okay. Sure. Well, I guess, I guess that's a thing you can do. Oh, the AI. Could you imagine? Could you imagine one day if the AI actually thought about it and was like, you know what? I feel like this may be a really bad move. <laughs> Oh, how the game would progress. Two alliances have expired. Genghis Khan and Peter. Okay, Genghis, I need you back involved. Thank you so much. And Peter as well. The more people I can have in my alliance, the more I'll feel a little bit safe. Kaguna is being very annoying here. Um, they keep pillaging all of my trade routes and that is not not um, behavior that I want to, you know, encourage. So we're gonna have to deal with this quickly. I could just destroy the city-state. It's got aluminium and oil. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to actually brave the world's fury on this one and we're gonna have to go and attack it. There's no way I'm not gonna attack this one. So, you know, it's kind of an unwanted opportunity, but it is an opportunity nonetheless to do some damage to these modern armors. They take a strength of 72 when they're embarked rather than the strength of, I mean, where's the nearest modern armor? 119 when they're on land, so it's a 40 reduction. Yeah, I mean, what, what, what more can you ask for? That's one sunk. Might as well get my battleships in to do some damage. And don't forget, they count as uh, cores killing armies. So this gives me a score every time I kill them as well. So not only is it a mistake, it's also a mistake that gives me tons of era score. One more spy. Who else would be a good target for my science stealing? Marley is probably the best target for me, but I think it's going to be... I mean, I can't even send them anything whilst we're still allied, so it wouldn't be a very good option for me. I think Amsterdam finally got itself a campus. Let's have a look. No, it doesn't. So that doesn't really make much sense. I think I might have to send them to Indonesia again. So there we go. Let's send them to this city. Oh my goodness, that is the capital of Vietnam that's been conquered. 25 population. Oh, blimey. No, uh -oh. Rome has finally got to the moon, which isn't good because they had nanotech. Oh, and uh, Mali does as well. Mali had nanotech too. Someone else has gone to war with me. Oh, Indonesia's gone to war with me again. Oh, here we go. This is where I regret having so many allies. Special session. Here we go. Okay, I'm voting down four times on the military emergency, but that's likely to go through, unfortunately, because I've got so many people at war with me. Yes, here we go. Uh, Byzantium and Tamiris. And Tamiris was already the case, but Byzantium. God, the world war is really kicking off now. There are two main sides. Myself, Mali and my allies versus Aztecs. You've got Indonesia has now joined in on the other side. This is so messy. Oh, oh well, I guess it gives me the option to continue going to war with people. So yeah, Trajan has got nanotech. Um, oh, Mansa Musa has got smart materials as well. We've got a beeline for nukes. We've got to do that. It's the only way we're going to actually disable Mali. And the only way we're going to do it quickly. They are building modern armor armies, which are a bit of a problem. But they've already got 132 garrison strength, so that's not too 
concerning really. Manhattan Project, yeah, let's just do it. I'm building aircraft carriers now. We've got Manhattan Project coming along. This is gonna be just the most epic, huge war game. I don't know if we're gonna be able to hold off victory to the whole game because if Rome is also going for a science victory, oh, I mean, we're gonna have to do some massive war here. I don't actually need to worry about keeping the city-state though because the world is already at war with me now. So the addition of more emergencies isn't really going to make too much of a difference to my long-term strategy here. We just need to make sure that we can get it. Can I reach my bomber across that? No, I can't. Oh, I thought we'd have enough strength in order to take that city out, but we don't. It's incredible. Any more embarked units? No, the Aztecs have kind of learned the error of their ways and they've pulled back a bit now. How boring. My first railway, by the way. It's not the world's first, but I do have a railway on the British Isles now. Finally. I've taken out almost a thousand military strength from the Aztecs so far though, so we've, we've, we've had some successes. Not a lot, but some. And every time that people declare war on me, I've got more luxuries that get freed up from previous trade deals, so that's quite fun as well. Just trading all our diplomatic favour. I need all the gold up front I can get, really. I also no longer need NITER. After all of that, the NITER is now pretty much useless to me. Oh, we've done it again. Yep, that's right. Embark unit attack. Oh, and actually they're just smashing into Sunderland as well. Oh, these steel walls are tough. It's a good thing I improved the strength using those tanks because they really are charging in. Oh, Indonesia is still doing well on the culture. Oh my goodness. Oh my God. What's happening? Look at that. Victory in eight turns. Oh boy, they they must have a monopoly. They must absolutely have a monopoly. Um, oh, I did my spy got killed and captured. I'm at war with them. There's no getting them back. Ooh, I got Schrodinger though. Do I save my? You know what? I'm gonna save myself. Do I want to gamble? Uh, there's not actually. Oh no, you know what? There's not many left. I'm gonna have to go for Schrodinger. I was gonna say, can I gamble for Salam? But no. Uh, Stephanie's up there as well. I might have to actually just rush some scientist projects. Some, not a huge amount of scientist points are going through, but I really want Stephanie. If I can pick her up, that would be good for me. That would be really good for me. So yeah, you know what? Campus research grants. Let's get this going. Let's get it done. Go on, Kaguna. Join the best empire in the world. Yay! You did. That's one more source of aluminium and one more source of oil. This is a world war purely, purely for strategics at the moment. It's going to be such a big pickup for me, that one. I know the world will hate it. I know they will, but what can you do? Also, I built a Panama Canal next to Panama. So now I've got an industrial zone that has been surrounded by t a canal and a canal city. That is one of the best things I've done in this game. I'm proud of that. What's Schrodinger going to give us? Rocketry, satellites, telecommunications. Yeah, <laughs> it's not bad. That's a good combo. How, right, what is Indonesia doing? How are they getting so much stuff? It's gonna be a monopoly of some kind. So actually, oh, the Aztecs have two monopolies. I have a monopoly of sugar, apparently. What do I? Yeah, I've got plus 60. That's incredible. Um, what has Indonesia got? Why are they getting so much? Oh, they've got a monopoly of dyes and a monopoly of jeans and a monopoly of spices and salt and tea. Indonesia. Oh, fair play. Fair play to you, sir. There's nothing I can do. My army is just too far away and I'm attacking the Aztecs at the moment. I mean, even eight turns? I've got no idea. I don't think they are going to win in eight turns, but even if they got close, that would be such a pickup. Also, look, my fighter is finally in play. Huzzah! Go on, attack me again. You know you want to. Smash yourself into my cities pointlessly. Do it. I dare you. I challenge you to this duel. Yep. There you go, modern armor into the sea. Of course it flipping is. They're under 2,000 military strength now. Oh yes, and they put anti-tanks in there as well. Oh goodness me. What a what a day. What a what a world. What a world we live in. Oh, what's that? A modern armor army in the sea. My fighter enjoys finding that one. Oh, didn't quite get the kill though. That's unfortunate. No worries. I'll use my wooden sea dogs. Haha. -ha. Here is one more source of oil as well. Perfect. We now have nine coming in and I'm beelining up to, where is it? Conservation to give myself resource management. That gives me more aluminium, more oil. Both of these things will give me more planes, more boats. I just love it. It's, it's, it's such a good upgrade for me. Lasers, missile cruisers and jet fighters. Actually, jet fighters are genuinely very helpful because my fighter is doing a lot of damage in hull. And now it's got more range. One, two, three, four, five, six. I can now go inland and start attacking units. 
Hasn't got strafe yet. It's going to be very powerful when it does. Next up, I think I'm going to go for stealth tech and then we'll go robotics. I was thinking about nuclear submarines, but I think I'd rather just use the boats that I've got for now. How much is an upgrade to missile cruiser fleets? It's 510 as well as using quite a bit of oil, but oil I have more of. I have more of a glut of oil than I do any other resource, so I'm going to take advantage of that. So yeah, let's just upgrade it all. Huge switch away from coal for my army, which means that my coal power plants should have a lot more flexibility now. There we go, tech boost. Predictive systems, yeah, I need to keep stealing from Rome if I can. They're getting the Mars colony up as is Mansa Musa and both have smart materials. Oh boy, we are reaching the end game. How's Indonesia doing? Oh, they're getting tourism still. 13 turns until they win, apparently. Well, we'll keep at it. <laughs> I'm not giving up just yet, but it's uh, it's looking, looking rather saucy. One more source of aluminium as well. Good. What don't I need? Okay, all of these extra luxuries, let's just, I know Brazil's paying more for them, but I need the gold up front because I need to get bombers. Diplomatic favor is giving me pretty much nothing right now, so I will take the gold for that one. Nitre, iron, horses, these are the things that I don't need. All of the other resources I do kinda need to hang on to a little bit. Yeah, not a lot on the open market for me at the moment. Saying that, I can sell uranium for a ton. Not worth it, I need to keep that uranium because I need it for nukes. I need it for giant death robots. All right, missile cruisers. Let's see how these fight against the AI. Look at that, 117 strength. That's a bit better. Oh, yes, 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 yes. This is an upgrade that I'm going to enjoy a lot. In fact, actually, we can get that city down pretty low. I wonder if I can get that down to zero. Probably not. That jet fighter kind of wanted to destroy units. It's much better at units than cities, but if there's nothing else to strike, I get it to attack the city. Do I go in and try and destroy this? I think, you know what? I can. We're actually going to go for it. I'm going to move my units in and we're just going to commit to taking this out of the game. There is the city down to zero health. I can take it as a destroyer attack. It's just whether or not it's worth doing it now or if it's worth just waiting for a second. This encampment is owned by the cities of the north. I really want to attack both cities at the same time, ideally. Let's get the destroyers both in. Yeah, these all sat there. Just so I've got lots and lots of units that are all able to strike at the same time, just to confuse them. The sea dogs here, if they discover that, they'll attack that instead. If I just uh, stole a little bit of gold as well, which is a lovely thing. And I can buy myself another bomber. More bombers needed now. More bombers needed. Let's keep these going. Oh, my first aircraft carriers as well. Now this is with the new mod. This is with aircraft carriers perfected. So as a reminder, they can no longer attack. They gain half XP whenever carried aircraft gain XP. That's a really cool thing. They have a new promotion tree. They have a range of three visible range and they can improve that one as well. They've got extra different things. They get extra air slots if they go into fleets, which I think are pretty cool as well. And you can see this is the new class tree. Uh, armored, defend, uh, armored deck gives defending. Damage control heals all the time. Mobile dry docks means that I can heal other boats around them, which is awesome. Super carrier, <laughs> that heals like all the, the planes on it as well, which is really cool. Sight range, see subs. I'm going to go for armored deck on one and I'm going to go for scout planes on the other and just enjoy this. It's got a five, five visibility that now. It's pretty cool. This machine gun in my capital as well is also firing 105. It's sort of like a D-Day situation where I'm sat in London, just stopping people from getting over. The defense of the mainland is strong and we're doing well. Oh, I really need that oil. Amsterdam is such an annoying, such an annoying thing for me. If Rome goes into a dark age in the next three turns, I would appreciate that a lot. You know what, I'm not gonna wait. I've got enough population off the coast, like Sheffield with 13 pop, Plymouth with 11. I think we can just about hold the city if we go for it. Yeah, look at that. It is loyal. Perfect. This gives them another problem because they don't, they're not going to know where to send their units. But look, England has started to take over the east coast of America. We're beginning to start to do the things I promised we'd do earlier in the game. Also, a CAD has actually flipped against us, which is good because that means I can now attack it and not feel too bad. So I'll do that. There is another source of uranium, by the way. There's a third one just off that. There's some oil here. Oh my goodness, taking over Canada is going to give me so much much natural resource. I am really looking forward to it. Oh, there's another source of aluminium. The other side of the mountain range. Oh my goodness, yes. Yes, yes, yes. I will take that. Anything that gives me more planes right now is a good thing. And look how much oil is in this bay as well. 
We've got to go for American unification. This is going to power my army for the rest of the game. If we get that far, Indonesia is threatening to end this game at some point very soon. Oh, aircraft carrier fleets. Amazing. Okay, cool. Well, we've got actually quite a few options for us now to put these aircraft carriers in and, and for all of our aircraft generally. So I'm going to rebase a fighter to the inland area and I will rebase my bomber into the aircraft carrier. I quite like the idea of using the aircraft carriers where I can. I'm going to take a turn to just sort of move them across. I know it's a little bit of a waste of movement, but I think I just I just want to play with them. I want to see what they can do, you know? This is this is the main thing for me. Stealth tech. We have stealth tech now. Good. Good, 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 good. This is actually really handy. 145 gold for a promotion. It's pretty cheap, but it gives me so much more power. I will take it. Atomic era. Okay. More options available to us now. But first of all, we have a look and see what Rome's doing. Golden age. Oh, how boring. Why are you in a golden age? Aztecs are in a golden age as well. So no luck on that one. Never mind. What we're going to do is go again for to arms. The golden age wars, I think, are pretty good. Bodyguard of Lies, to be fair, is really good because we're stealing tech, but we're not stealing a huge amount in overall comparison to everything else. So I think to arms still works well. We're building a lot of military still. I want to make sure that that all goes nicely for me. I'm just thinking about Brazil. Technically, I need to take a little bit of the north coast of Brazil. Now, I think it's kind of this bit where Natal is but I might just sort of translate it over a little bit and just take Hunza because Hunza's got coal <laughs> um, but I probably shouldn't make friends with them I think Brazil probably are the sort of people that I could actually let flip and we'll we'll fight them feels a bit cruel but you know what that's just the sort of game we're playing today my first attack from an aircraft carrier as well it's only a jet fighter but we're going to start attacking this modern armor like stop that now and as you can see, the aircraft carrier got half of that experience. Lovely. That is so helpful. Oh, we're actually out of oil. We are out of oil. I've got a minus five penalty to troops on that one. I don't like that. Might have to buy some. Oh, and it's expensive. It's expensive. It's worth it, though. It is worth it. I've still got like a little bit of oil power coming out. I might just need to have a look at oil power plants and just get rid of them. I'm going to search for them in my own lands and see where they are and whether I can turn them off. So Plymouth already. Let's convert back. I could go to nuclear power, but oh no, I can't go to coal because it's banned by the World Congress at the moment, isn't it? Let's have a quick look. Yes, it is. Do I really want to use my uranium on something like power? I mean, is giant death robots going to be the answer compared to everything else or nukes? I feel like nukes very much are the answer here. So yeah, I might need to just do that. All right, I think it's easier just to claim more oil. There's so much in the coast around here. Which city? I think this is the capital. This one will be in the capital as well. Yep, and then this one, is this in the capital as well? No, this is in the northern city. But taking the capital gives me a minimum two sources of oil. That's... I think it's worth hanging on. We're just, we're gonna we're gonna try here. My jet bombers, unfortunately, are gonna start taking some damage here because unfortunately there is a battleship in that city dealing some pretty good air defense damage to me. But it's fine. I can promote as we go. And the Congo will take peace. There's a couple of people that I can peace out with here that I'm not really fighting for any reason. I mean, some of them want crazy peace deals. 400 gold per turn to make peace with Tamira. So that's not fun. I don't like that. This missile cruiser actually managed to survive with one health, which is ridiculous when you think about it. I'm just actually, look, plus 99, there you go. The whole thing just went to full health immediately. Oh, you gotta love it. You have to, you have to love it. Right, we need this city down quickly now. Come on, go away. I don't need you in my life anymore. I know my bombers are taking huge amounts of damage doing this. This is why I saved the promotions, by the way, so that I can promote and heal. Oh, when me. The rare times the AI actually uses air defenses, they are the worst. But that city is now down to pretty much zero health, which is awesome. That, oh, there's a tank there that's stopping me from progressing. I really want Hercules to be able to run through because I think I'll be able to kill the city if I do run through. But unfortunately, that's just a little far away from all of the other units. That's uh, unfortunate. And oh my goodness, look at that sneaky. Oh no, I didn't mean to go and pillage that oil, but never mind. Look, they put a military engineer on top of the campus to stop me from stealing it. Sneaky. Anyway, a card is now mine. It just sort of gives me a little bit more of Canada. Gives me a little bit of a larger area to land troops and send them to the front line. Oh, listening post. There we go. Finally. Ugh, I've been meaning to get a spy across for so long, but I've been 
doing so much technological stealing with them, they've genuinely been busy the whole game. That's another plus three combat strength against the Aztecs. That makes a small difference. Please, oh my god, would you stop, like, attacking across the sea? Like, they're just jumping into the sea with cavalry, slamming themselves into my 106 strength walls, and then being surprised when they die. It's like, stop it, please. Oh, and Victor got immobilized yet again from Scotland. They are gunning for him this game. That is appalling. Oh, I need more aluminium and I need it fast. Luckily, that is actually a source of aluminium just as I was about to run out. Have I got enough in me to... Yeah, due to anti-air. Oh, V. Oh, yeah, minus three, minus three. That's two minus three penalties. So that's a bit unfair. It's ridiculous. But I can go one attack like that. Put the city down to zero health. In comes the tank. And because Belouche, the city's mine. Perfect. I've even got... Hopefully... I oh, know I used... actually used my builders. That's annoying. I need to go and get this aluminium into my land as quickly as possible. But the city is loyal. We're happy. We're good to go. We're going to fix everything. It's going to be fine. Oh, Indonesia finally came to me. That's a little bit worrying. That's a, that's an ironclad, but that is a nuclear submarine armada. Ugh, no. Oh, I wish, I wish my name, all of my traders were immune to being pillaged. I, I have a sense that it's going to be a bit of a messy few days for me. Okay, the Aztecs offering peace. Do I take it? Do I take it? The question is here. Do I give up on just unifying America? I've taken pretty much the East Coast and I've got bits of Northern Canada, so I've made a good effort of, you know, doing the English thing in America. It's not quite there, but it's almost there. The thing I could do is move my navy through Panama and attempt to attack Indonesia. They are so much stronger. They, I can't tell you how much stronger they are. They've got 6,400 military strength. <laughs> it's, oh, they double the size of my navy. But I could try. Oh, yeah. I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to actually give it a go. I'm going to move my navy through. We're going to go through Preston or the Panama Canal. And I'm going to head over to Indonesia and we're going to see if we can start island hopping. I mean, they're probably going to hit me dead before I even get close to them. But what are you going to do? Oh, no. All of their navy's here and it's now beginning to just pillage all of my trade routes. Oh, dear. Their nuclear submarines do get hit reasonably badly by my city strike, so I've got a bit of defense, but it's still overwhelmingly powerful compared to my army size, so that's that's no fun. Saivia, you need to get lost now. Come on, this is too much. Oh, Manhattan Project done. Manhattan Project's done. Nuclear device. Build it. Build it now. We need the nukes. This is how we're gonna do this. Yeah. Okay, this is this is good. I feel like, yeah, we didn't make a huge we didn't get everything, but I've got a lot of Canada. There's a few cities I need to take to unify it, and I'll come back, don't worry. But now I have an opportunity to take my army through an attack in Indonesia. This is the only uh, it, it just feels like this is the last the last hurrah of this game before Indonesia wins that culture victory. Mansa Musa is now also now rushing space projects. Being honest with you. If my ally wins a science victory, I'm going to take that as like I was in the winning team. <laughs> I love it. Sometimes, you know, you play this game for long periods of time and you never get cease to be amazed by how predictably easy the game can be. This game, generally, like the, the AI has played really, really well and you don't see it all the time. And I'm just I'm just quite pleased. It's been really refreshing just to see them play this well. Oh my goodness, an actual great Admiral. My first of the game and well needed. Well needed. That is some really, really big boost. Straight over to Panama. Thank you. Oh, and all my missile cruisers get that boost. Yes. Thank you. Sydney, go on, return by foot. Do it. Failure. Oh, killed. Never mind. No more science for Ursa. I was actually just having a look at the buffed Indonesian ability and it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. Two gold, one food, and one production from sea resources. Campuses, theater squares, holy sites, and industrial zones receive standard adjacency bonuses from water tiles. Standard. That's nuts. Uh, we're going to have to go and have a look at that in a second. And uh, coastal tiles gain health, uh, faith, and housing. Coastal cities within nine tiles of the capital generate an influence point of return and an amenity. Goodness me. Harbor buildings and water park buildings with faith. Okay, yeah, Indonesia is pretty powerful. But that means if I have a look at some of these, uh, like theater squares, this is that a plus six theater square? It's a plus, it's an eight. Oh boy. I, I mean, is, is, is this right? Is this campus really got the crazy, I mean, seven science? How many reefs around here? Is that a reef? I don't think there are actually reefs really a plenty around the Indonesian islands, but we've got to, we are, we've got to have a game with Indonesia with the expanded mod. It looks so fun. Oh, 
There's the Indonesian nuclear submarine. I think I can get that kill. Oh, not quite. Not quite, but almost. There we go. The defeat screen rings. You know what? Actually, I'm really not Rumble fussed Ghost. about that. It was an amazing game. We had so much fun. Indonesia did win the culture victory, and genuinely, it was because of the Monopoly bonus they were getting. They were doing amazingly well. And for every single time somebody says, oh, Monopoly's mode is broken, it makes the game too easy. Well, it can, but every now and then, every now and then, the deity AI powered up by real strategy, which is what I use to make the AI better, it can pull off the spectacular. And that was a 21 player culture victory for Indonesia. What a game. Now, the, the main problem I had that game was I was absolutely sat on for the first part of the game. If we just have a look quickly at player science. We'll get rid of some of the people that don't really matter this game. Like, I didn't really have much to do with Gaul or Shaka or Byzantium or France or Vietnam or Genghis Khan or Tamiris. You know, we'll, we'll get rid of a lot of these people that don't matter. These are the important ones. You'll see just how bad a game I had, okay? So this is the 100 science line. Kind of that first little indentation because we got to 418. And if I go along and give you a rough indication, I hit... 100 science at about 160, turn 160, something like that in that sort of frame. And that was because of the endless war. Because we had such a compressed start on the UK that was so tiny, we lost London through loyalty pressure at the beginning of the game. I don't honestly think there was much we could have done to stop that. We had Portugal attack us, we had Rome take over Amsterdam. Oh, it was, it was a brutal start and my culture was no better. My culture was, out of all of the main contenders, the worst by far and that really suppressed me this game. I had an appalling culture game. If I'd taken Kamasi and I had more city-states, like had I actually gone Hermetic Order, I'm sorry, had I not gone Hermetic Order and had I gone probably Owls, that would have been hugely beneficial because I would have taken over a lot of the city-states and we would have kept them all and that would have massively helped. Kamasi, on this map, would have given me huge bonuses, but I didn't get owls until probably turn 150, so I would have had to wait you know, a huge amount of time for that. You can see it in my score. Look how low my score was. I only overtook, is that, um, who is this, Portugal, when I started to go to war with them. Like, that's the crazy thing. Yeah, and I didn't take Portugal out until right near the end of the game, but I was suppressed quickly. Number of combats, I was at war for a large period of time. Amer like, I'm sorry, Rome had a really, really high war game. And actually, if we look at the player science, Rome get off the bat really quickly. They were up to 100 science by turn 50, which is just nuts to see. Units lost. Yeah, units killed. I, 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 I am amazed by this. This, is, this game has woken me up to the power of this mod and what the AI can do with a bit of the map and a bit of the start. Um, if I just have a look at Total Religions Founded, good, good. Really not many religions founded this game at all. A very, very poor religious game. In fact, actually, no, that, ignore that. It's because I've turned all of them off. If I put all these back on, you'll see. There you go. Look, there's everyone's religion, so that's fine. But yeah, it was, it was because, look at this, Indonesia just pulling crazy, crazy tourism. I wish I could show you what multipliers they were getting because they're only on 1,256 tourism per turn. That's the nuts thing. They were only on a little bit of tourism. I've had huge amounts more tourism than that in a game. What they were doing was getting the monopolies. They had monopolies over so many resources. Tea, salt, dyes, spices. So it's four already, which is a crazy thing. And it's because they had no Australia. Had Australia been in this game, they would have been severely limited. Or Coupe. Coupe would have been limiting them as well. But, you know, those are the rules. I, I, I didn't have America to fight. And on, or Canada. So I really can't complain. How did I do in terms of this game? Well, we actually managed to unify the UK. I managed to get Iceland. I didn't manage to get into Europe, really, apart from taking Lisbon. But that's only because Portugal made me. But these addition of these Portuguese cities massively helps. But this American empire that I've made is genuinely really good. 133 production, 105 production, 102 production. Auckland obviously boosting this quite a bit, but these industrial zones I've got going here are giving me crazy levels of production. So this oil power, oil, I had to put oil in this city because I, I was just running low on coal. I can actually mix that over to coal once the World Congress disappears, but I'm getting 46 production from buildings there, which is pretty cool. 55, 27 from a coal power plant in Sunderland which is 
pretty cool. It's got uh, an adjacency of plus nine. So yeah, that's an 18 coal power plant with the 50% bonus for being on a different continent gives you the 27. Wow, that's powerful. I'm looking forward to playing with this mod some more. I've kind of reassured myself that the AI plays the mod well enough that I haven't got to worry about me being superly overpowered. Like, we have Marley with 1,500 science and Nisha with 1,000 science per turn. Yeah, uh, this has been a good game. A good game for lots of people. And I'm looking forward to jumping into the next one already. Did I take Australia? and New Zealand. No. Did I take India? No. But Indonesia, they stopped me this game. And you know what? Vicky. Vicky remembers. Vicky will be back. Vicky will be back on a map that gives us a slightly bigger England. <laughs> if I put, oh my goodness, if I put loyal capitals on actually, I, I honestly think that would have helped me massively. Oh well, what are you going to do? I had loads of fun. That was a really, really good fun game. Thank you all for watching and we will come back next time for Ursa the Revenge. Indonesia. Let's go Boogaloo number two. I'm gonna do it. See you all next time. Goodbye. And finally a very special shout out goes to Glorious Petra, Salty Tech, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Dayboy91, Sean Critiz, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Devil X, Skeptical Bear, Kroger Brand Trail Mix, Alex Noob, Cinnamon Beard, Portland, Petra Ryan, Matthew Hatch, Emir EC, Henry, Rom88, Radiatore, and Private Selection Genoa Salami for all of your support as well as everybody that leaves comments and interacts with the channel generally. Thank you so much. See you all next time.